Hello. In this demonstration, I'm going to be showing how to take an Android application and make it internationalized, which is to say, make it support multiple languages. So the Android platform itself supports many languages, and most apps are initially written in one language, but then we're going to look at how we translate that into a different language. So the app we're going to translate is shown on the screen here. We get to decide your message. You got two buttons, hello and goodbye. You click hello, it says hello world. You click goodbye, it says goodbye world. So what we want to do is we want to translate, the, oh, and then if you hit the button here, it gives you a little me uh, menu that does nothing. So we want to translate that into another language. So there's a couple steps we're going to have to do here. We're first going to have to prepare our application for being translated. We're then going to actually translate it using an automatic translation tool. And then we'll test it out as to see how it works, all using the emulator. OK, so let's have a look at the source code first. So I've got here, on the left-hand side, I've got my main activity that does the code. We'll have a look at that in a moment. And first, let's start by looking at the actual uh, activity in the layout. So it's fairly simple. We've got the two text views there. No name, don't have to, have to touch it. And this one down here is text message, because my buttons have to change the values there. I've got a button hello and a button goodbye. So when I click this, I load it up and I set some text into this, activity, or this uh, text view. Let's have a look at how that's done. So in on create, and the usual stuff, I then call a function that I've written here called setup button. I've got two buttons that do basically the same thing, so I'm going to use the same code to set them up and pass in some different arguments. So what I'm passing in, if we look at the code down here, is I'm passing in a button ID of the button I want to use, and then a string. So I've got the message here that I'm going to be setting up in um, when you click it, what message is displayed. So I create the but I grab the button based on the button ID, I set the on click listener. And here we set the on-click listener. I find the text view, and I use message here. Now I had to make message final because it's being used inside of an anonymous inner class, and to actually use that, I need to um, make sure it's final. It's just a feature of Java. Okay, so that's the tour of what's going on. You call it for both. We pass in, for example, the button for buy, and we pass in the message goodbye world, and that's what appears on the screen. Now, what do we need to do to internationalize this? Well, Java supports international or sorry, pardon me, Android supports internationalization through using this strings.xml file. This is the key. So let's have a look at in here what strings.xml looks like. I'm going to get rid of this hello world because that string is no longer used. But we're going to put into here all of the strings that are inside of my application that are generally accessible. And it's this file and this file only that we're going to translate. You can translate other things and make them come up for different languages, uh, different layouts, diff if you've got really long text or maybe really, really short text for some languages, you might want to switch layouts. You can also translate a bunch of different icons. So if you have uh, an icon, for example, for information with an I, if you translate that to Chinese, you might want to translate the icon as well. So we want to get all of our strings into this strings.xml. I'm going to start with the layout. So in the layout here, we've got a number of things we want to translate. We got the title at the top, which is part of the app that'll actually be translated otherwise. We've got this uh, string, that one, and these two buttons. So if I go into the actual source code here, Android in Eclipse makes this awesomely easy. I can click on it, and it gives me a warning here on the left. It's saying a hard-coded string should be in a string resource. And that's exactly what we want to do. So I can go Control One, and I can say Extract String. I give it a name. And sure, decide your message sounds pretty good, pretty descriptive of what it's going to do. And we can see now it's replaced it here with decide your message it is going to be pulled from the strings. And if I look over here, it's now appeared in strings.xml. That's fantastic. Let's do the rest. So that's one down here. Your message here. Going to get rid of the trailing underscore. To, you'll note that I haven't recompiled yet, so it still has the same warning errors. The, this is the Android lint. It's still sitting around from before. Hello, and goodbye, extract string. Fantastic. I'll save that. It's already saved. Looking over here, all those strings appeared. And now if I were to run the application, I have to go back to my Java code to actually run it with Control F11 in Eclipse. I think I ran. This is, of course, identical, so we're not going to know. So let's try it again. Control F11 should load pretty quick. Here we go. It looks identical. It's just pulling the strings from a different location. 
So that's the first half we've got to do, is all of our, the strings that were in my actual layouts need to be in strings.xml. But that's only part of it. We notice here that I've got hello world and goodbye world are both in my actual Java code. Now this isn't a very good way of doing things. So let's extract that. Now I don't know if there's a way that we can do it through here. Maybe there's a refactor. I doubt it for an Eclipse thing. So I'm just going to copy this hello world, go to strings. An easy way to do that, I could do it via the text here, but I'll show it via the interface just for completeness. I'm going to add a new, I guess I want a new string. I'm going to name this one hello world. All lowercase, you can't use dashes, but you can use underscores. And the value is going to, oops, the value is going to be hello, hello world. That seems to do. And just by clicking out of that, it's saved. So I'll add a new string. The name, I'm going to say goodbye world. And that'll save it. OK, so that's a good start. I now have the strings in strings.xml. Now I need to somehow access them. So I'm going to save all files. That'll trigger a recompile. And item tag, oh, we got an error here. So what are we saying here? In the resource, we found a quote, and it's on a double line. Ah. So when I paste it in, it was on a double line. Let's go have a look at what it looked like. The actual code here, and it's got this rogue hello world there. So I'll get rid of that. I don't know where that came from. OK, so we come back over here. Now, I haven't yet used those strings. I've still got the hard-coded values here. So instead of passing in a string, I'm going to pass in a resource ID. So that's r.strings, because it's in the string uh, portion. And then I can list all my strings. And so that's going to be hello world. And down here, r. I guess I want the string, dot goodbye. And not just goodbye, I want a goodbye world. Now, I've got to fix up my uh, function here that's not taking in a string anymore. It's taking in an int. And then down here, in fact, I don't need to change anything because this set text message happens to be overloaded. It's got a me one method will take in a string, another method takes in an int. So let's try that. Let's just fill this in. I'm going to bring up the cursor help here. And we can see here all the different versions. So I can pass in a text sequence, such as a string, or I can pass in a resource ID. So if I look at that one, it's going to pass in a, take a resource ID. So that's the one that's now being used. So this is the a good way to do it, very seamless, very easy. Let's imagine that we didn't have that, or we needed the string for something else. Maybe we're building the string in a longer sense. We don't just want to pass in a resource ID. So I can actually get the string. So I'm going to say, get string from resource or from uh, strings.xml. So let's call it message, and I can simply say, get string. So get string, and I pass it in a resource ID. My resource ID here is message. And then with that message, I can say text view, which is the one I want to edit, set text. And then I'm going to pass in the message. Uh, not applicable. So I can't get the string on this. It wants to create a method, or I can change the type of message to int. Ah, right because I've got these two things here, message and message. So let's call this, this really shouldn't be message, this should be message ID. Problem is I've got a naming confusion. There. And I'm going to change it here in my commented one just so I have it consistent. Good names are important. OK, so if I run this, let's go back out of here, back out of the app, just so we know when we actually run it. Run it here, and there should be no noticeable change. Your message here, hello, hello world, goodbye world. Now it occurs to me I've forgotten the exclamation mark in hello, so let's go add that. Hello world, hello world with an exclamation mark. We're happy to do this. OK, so now we've got all of the strings in our application in one location. So my Java code shouldn't have a single quoted string in it that's going to be user facing, or the user will see. Likewise, in my um, XML file, it shouldn't have any here. It's still got the lint messages up from before. We can ignore those because we actually did fix it, it just hasn't realized that yet. And then strings has all this content in it.
So that's half the battle. Now, how do we actually make this internationalize? Well, it turns out that Android does all the work for us. We have this folder called values. If we create a new folder, we can make Android load it whenever we load it with a different language. So I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to support French because I know it better than any other language, which is to say not very well. So under resources, I'm going to create a folder named, well, I'm going to give it the values, dash, and then I give it whatever the name of the or resources that I'm looking for. So for example, for French, it uses the code FR. For um, Japanese, for example, it's JA. You can look up online what all these resources codes are. So now I've got this folder. Anything I put in here, if Android the OS is set to be French, it will preferentially try and load things from this folder. If it can't find it, it will default back to the values folder. So this strings.xml and values must be a superset of all strings used in the application. I can put one in here that is just the file, just the contents that I want translated to French. In this case, I want everything translated to French. Now, how can I do this? Well, I could have a friend who speaks French. That would be a great way to do it. Fairly straightforward here. I could look it up online. But of course, machine translation is a fantastic option. So Google actually has a tool called the Google Translation Toolkit. So translate.google.com slash toolkit. I'm already logged in here. And what we can do is we can actually put in the contents here and have Google translate it for us. So I'm going to upload a message, or upload a file. I'd like to add some content to translate. Uh, let's actually go back for a sec. Let's upload the file. I can come back here and figure out exactly which file this is. So I can go down to Properties on the file, having right-clicked. It'll tell me the exact location. Switching back to here, I want to browse for a file. And that'll take the file. So what language would I like to translate into? Well, let's go to French. That's the one we're looking for. And I can click Next. I don't want to pay someone to translate, so I'm just going to say no thanks. I'll do this manually and do it myself. So here we've got it. I click on it, and it'll convert it for use. It knows enough on how to process the file that it can read the uh, file type and it'll extract just the strings for translation. And here we have it. It's pulled out all of the strings for me. And I can scroll down a little. We can see here it's internationalization demo, internationalization demo. Of course, I think it should be the other way around, but that's fine. Settings, it's translated, and so forth down the line. I don't want that one. Hello, au revoir, bonjour, and au revoir tout le monde. So that looks pretty good. It's got those. If it didn't quite get it right, if you know enough that you want to change it, or you look up online, you find something different, uh, you can click on any one of these, and then type in your corrected version. So that's good enough. I'm going to say complete here. I'm happy with all of that. Marked as complete. If I go back to this, hit F5 to refresh. Here's the active one. French, I'm going to select it, and I'm going to say download. Now I can save the file, or what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose just open it in Notepad. Now it comes all in over here in one line. Uh, Notepad's not smart enough to understand Linux file uh, line feeds, but that's OK. It turns out Eclipse is. So I want to now create this file here, so I'm going to copy it. I'm going to drop it into my French folder and open it up. Of course, it's now an identical copy. We see here down the resource has changed from being just the resource to the French flag. So that tells us which resource file we're in. Select all, paste. Oops, let's try that again. Bring in from Notepad. And now we've got all these. It kept the names the same. It kept the XML just the same. We didn't translate, for example, name to nom. But it, le it gave me all of these updated strings here. So now I've gone through and I've translated it. Let's see what happens when I run my program. So I'm going to close this. Make sure that closes. And then I'm going to run. I can't run it from the strings file. I've got to be on the Java to run. And it comes up in English, which is exactly what we want, because I'm still running in English. 
and the application still works perfectly. I haven't changed any of the Java code, remember. I'm going to go back to my main screen. I'm going to bring up a program called Custom Locale. It'll be in your emulator. Uh, if you're running it on an actual phone, it may be under Settings, Change Language Settings, and so forth. And now I can pick a language. So I've changed, translated it to French, so let's pick a French here. Uh, Canadian French, that's where I am. So I select, and the entire thing's now in French. So my Android phone is now trying to run in French. And we see here all the name, the icons that can be translated have been translated. So let me close that out and make sure I'm running the right one. We will launch it from my emulator, or from my uh, code. And here I have my code already running translated. So all the messages are in French. Everything I do is completely in French. So that's fantastic. I didn't have to change my actual app at all. It happened because I put all of my strings in the resource folder. And Android is smart enough to try and load the internationalized translated version uh, when it loads the uh, resources. So thank you for watching. And uh, one last thing is you probably want to switch back to a language you can actually read. So when you do switch it, uh, make sure you know how to get back. Uh, if you pick a language like, uh, say, Chinese, if you don't read Chinese, it might be fairly hard for you to figure out exactly what to click on. I'll take Anglais, Canada, and we should be back to normal. All right, thank you for watching.